Welcome to the world of immunology. Before digging deep in immunodeficiency diseases, it is important to be aware of some basics in order to understand, not memorize, the field of immunology. Who are the soldiers of our Ministry of Defense? In our body, there's huge army full of soldiers. They are divided into five groups. B lymphocyte, T lymphocyte, neutrophiles, complement and finally natural killer cells. B lymphocytes attack invading organisms using weapon called immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulins are produced by plasma cells, which themselves are the result of the development and differentiation of B cells. Any factor that impedes the development of the B cell lineage and or the function of mature B cells may result in reducing the levels of serum immunoglobulins. There are five types of immunoglobulins. M, A, G, B, and E. Or Magdi. Remember that, transfer of maternal antibody to fetus is low before 36 weeks gestation. Also remember that, during first 3 to 6 months of life, infants depend on immunoglobulins that has been transferred to him from his mother in utero mainly after 36 weeks gestation. IgM is the mother of all. It can be transformed to any other immunoglobulin in case of need. The transformation process is called class switch recombination. Normally serum IgM is detected by one week of age and reaches adult levels by one year of age. It is wise to remember that IgA is responsible for defending mainly respiratory and gastrointestinal tracts. So. Any defect in IgA will lead to sinopulmonary and gastrointestinal infections. IgA is detectable by two weeks of age and reaches adult levels by seven years. IgG is the grand tissue soldier. It reaches adult levels by seven to twelve years. So, what happens in case of B-cell defect? B-cells are responsible for what is called humoral immunity. Isolated B-cell defect represents 65% of primary immunodeficiency diseases. Always start by remembering IgA workplace. Also, remember that both B-cells and bacteria starts with letter B. So, in case of B-cell defect, expect recurrent bacterial pyogenic infections affecting mainly respiratory and gastrointestinal systems. Infections with encapsulated organisms. Pneumococcus species, Haemophilus influenzae, and Streptococcus species. These bacteria represent the main causes of sinopulmonary infections. Diarrhea, as a sign of gastrointestinal tract infection is common, especially secondary to infection with Giardiolamblia. Conjunctivitis may also occur, following B-cell defect. Few fungal or viral infections may exist except for enterovirus and polyomyelitis. Of course, it won't be a secret to say that B-cell defect is characterized by decreased levels of immunoglobulins in serum and secretions. Before moving to T-lymphocyte, let me give you one clinical and exam trick. Both common variable immunodeficiency and agamaglobulinemia may present with the same clinical picture of B-cell defect, yet, presentation below two years old favors agamaglobulinemia and older than that, especially a teenage, should make you think about common variable immunodeficiency disease or rarely, a typical form of agamaglobulinemia. T lymphocyte. T cell precursors migrate from the bone marrow to the thymus where combination with T cell receptors occurs, then T cell precursors develop into CD4 and CD8 T cells. Both CD4 and CD8 then immigrate from the thymus and enter peripheral lymphoid organs via bloodstream, 
where activation and further differentiation into effector T cells occur upon antigen encounter. Some of the antigen activated T cells and B cells differentiate into memory cells, which promptly differentiate into effector cells upon ray exposure to the specific antigen. T cells are responsible for what is called cellular immunity. Isolated T cell defect represents about only 5% of primary immunodeficiency. Usually present is recurrent infections with prot MVF, opportunistic organisms, which are protozoa, mycobacteria, viruses and fungi. Clinically patient will suffer from prot MVF, which is protracted diarrhea, malabsorption, very short stature and failure to thrive. Fatal reactions may occur from live virus or BCG vaccination. Moreover, high incidence of malignancy and poor survival beyond infancy or childhood may occur. And now, listen carefully to these combinations that should make you think about T-cell defect. Failure to thrive, diarrhea, malabsorption, and fungal infections. Try to recall prod MVF. Recurrent viral infections. Also possible to be due to natural killer cell defect. Combination of both B cell and T cell defect, or in other words, humoral and cellular immunity deficiency, represent 15% of primary immunodeficiency. Usually expected if you find mixture of both pictures is in case of disease called severe combined immunodeficiency. But please, always, widen your field of vision as other immunodeficiency disease called hyper-IgM may present with same clinical picture and in that case, treatment plan will be different. Neutrophiles Neutrophiles attack invading organism using its phagocytic weapon. Neutrophile or phagocytic defect represent about 10% of primary immunodeficiency diseases. Both count and functional neutrophiles defects are characterized by recurrent dermatologic infections with bacteria and fungi, such as Staphylococcus, Pseudomonas, Escherichia coli, and Aspergillus species. Neutrophiles love to abscess everywhere. That is why skin, lymph node, lung, and liver abscesses are common. Remember, wherever you see Staphylococcus organism, bone and joint infection are also common. And now, listen carefully to these combinations that should make you think about neutrophiles defect. Be careful. We did mention that neutrophiles love to abscess everywhere. But when abscess comes with eczema and frequent fractures, please shout, Hyper IgM syndrome. Compliment. Before talking about complement defect, remember that complement loves to complement all the family imitating B cells in encapsulated bacterial infection, imitating T cells in unusual organisms infection other than prot MVF, and finally, imitating neutrophiles in skin infection. In case of complement defect, recurrent bacterial infections with encapsulated organisms, pneumococcus and H influenzae. Also, Unusual susceptibility to recurrent gonococcal and meningococcal infections occur. Severe or recurrent skin and respiratory tract infection exist. In case of complement defect, you may find increased incidence of autoimmune disease. Combination of symptoms and signs that point to diseases not related to the above categories. The presence of associated problems, such as congenital heart disease and tetany from hypocalcemia, should make you think about de George syndrome. History of abnormal gait and telangiectasia on the skin should bring ataxia telangiectasi to your mind. Let me tell you one clinical and exam trick. Deep-seated infections can help to differentiate hyper IG syndrome from atopic dermatitis, which can be associated with extremely elevated levels of IgE. But don't be fooled by that. As a good pediatrician, you shouldn't forget that, atopic dermatitis plus eczema plus easy bruising or a bleeding disorder should make you shout with Scott Aldrich syndrome. Do you remember that till now, you shouted twice? Once with hyper IgM syndrome when you discovered skin abscess with eczema. And now with, thrombocytopenia with eczema, you shouted. With Scott. Now, let's move to important fact.
infections are common in children. School-aged children may have 8 to 10 upper respiratory tract infections per year. Infections in otherwise healthy children are usually self-limited and uncomplicated, and the child is healthy in between episodes with normal growth and development. So, when to be worried? There are six general reasons that should make you worried. 6F. Fulminant, life-threatening course. Frequent infections greater than or equal to eight episodes of otitis media, greater than or equal to two serious sinus infections, or greater than or equal to two episodes of pneumonia in one year, suggests an antibody deficiency. Frequent use of antibiotics and suboptimal treatment response. Fussy opportunistic organisms. Failure to thrive. Family history of immunodeficiency. Recurrent infections or early infant deaths. What investigations to ask for? Think step by step. Step one is to do basic things to prove infection, as principle and sight. So ask for CBC, peripheral smear, also called blood film, CRP and culture from blood and or, infection site. Radiology can be done with basic investigation group if needed. For example, chest X-ray or sinus X-ray. Step two is to move to more sophisticated investigations. You may ask for immunoglobulin pattern, antibody response to vaccine, and lymphocyte subpopulation. Always check that patient has not received blood products or intravenous immunoglobulin before interpreting immunoglobulin levels. If the patient has received such products, it is necessary to wait approximately three months before reassessment. Blood glucose for diabetes mellitus, serum ferritin, fasting triglycerides, blood fibrinogen, HIV serology can be included at this level. And now, let me tell you important clinical and exam trick. I am going to tell you, how can B and T lymphocyte test interpretation help distinguish the diagnostic possibilities? Normal numbers of T lymphocytes, with no detectable B lymphocytes should make you think about, a gamma globulinemia. Normal numbers of T and B lymphocytes, will go more with transient hypogamma globulinemia of infancy, or common variable immunodeficiency if patient is older than 2 years old. Decreased numbers of T lymphocytes with normal or decreased numbers of B lymphocytes, that make severe combined immunodeficiency a good guess. Decrease CD4 lymphocytes, suggest HIV infection. Next level of investigations, will be discussed with every disease, in upcoming videos. Finally, reaching treatment station. Please don't memorize. Expecting bacterial infection, choose antibiotics treatment with possibility of adding prophylactic antibiotics if needed. Same logic thinking, when expecting fungal or viral infections. In case of neutrophiles defect, add granulocyte colony stimulating factor to stimulate neutrophiles production. In case of low immunoglobulins, add intravenous immunoglobulins therapy, except for isolated IgA deficiency. Last resort will be hematopoietic stem cell transplantation and gene therapy that will be discussed with every disease. I think that is enough for today. See you.